the arrogance of atheism is mm. just as bad as the arrogance of the religious zealot. Literal interpretations of ancient texts, which are not even in the original language they were written in, which is so bizarre. Uh, church, because you don't like going to that. I actually like it. Uh, yeah, I think it's church. <laughs> Joe Rogan recently was on a podcast with this philosopher, and he starts talking about how we are inherently good and also how the Bible is not reliable because it's so ancient and the Hebrew text is so difficult to understand. So let's get right into it. Make sure to watch till the end so you know how to answer these questions and I have a Bible verse that will tie all of this together. Let's get right into the video. Well, we inherently know that it feels better to be a good person. We know it. We yeah. know it feels better to have good friends and good community and be someone that people can rely on and count on. We know like there's a general direction that makes us feel good to go mm. in that way. And I think that's the, the guiding light of whatever this power is that wants us to become a better version of what we are is. Yeah. That's, that's what forces, but forces that, that, the, that action. But I think we get too caught up in religious dogmatism and mm. we get too caught up in these literal interpretations of ancient texts which are not even in the original language they were written in which is so bizarre and apparently an incredibly difficult language to to read and comprehend and to translate when you're going back to like ancient hebrew we are trying to translate that into english like mm. how much is lost there like yeah. what did these people and also what where what was the original story where the fuck did all this come from like who, what was the the original guy that told these mm. stories what was the experience that he actually had mm. we're guessing because of people people I, I used to say about the bible and it was just a joke i don't really mean this if you're a bible fanatic that people are full that story sucks like that's all you have to do is look at it like people are full 100 percent. we know it's a fact it's the greatest story ever told you don't, you don't well think it's, it's like listen the president of the united states was just on tv the other day lying these people are full of they lie all the time we know they lie well, we, we should, catch them lying did you have you seen the the trump clip when he's asked about his favorite bible verse have you seen <laughs> yeah, that what did he say can we jamie are we allowed to get the what did he say clip? it was uh, I don't think he has one. He doesn't have one? No, oh, he didn't he come along with a favorite Bible. Let's see if he can get But yeah, like, um, I would have said Ezekiel. Here's just to, to wrap up like the like the finding meaning part. I think you're right. Like We can still, even if there's no God and there's no ultimate. Oh, here we go. Oh, we got to put our headphones on. We hear it. <laughs> Trump on gay rights. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into. A, there's no, no I, verse I, that means I a lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably. <laughs> I think it's just an incredible. Yeah, Old Testament. <laughs> you got to go old, son. <laughs> <laughs> New Testament's been monkeyed with. So he says even the New Testament is monkey with. And that's just not true. When we found the, the scrolls from the Dead Sea, the Dead Sea Scrolls, when we look back, Scripture is literally still the same. There's nothing that changes what the core values are in our beliefs in Jesus Christ. I am not a, a an anti-religious person. Mm. I think I was when I was younger. Yeah. I was uh, I went to Catholic school when I was a little boy and I decided that religion was bull because they were mean. But that was just, you know, me mm. being 6. Uh, uh, but then as I I was raised by hippies, but as I've gotten older, I I kind of have a belief that the arrogance of atheism is mm. just as bad as the arrogance of the religious zealot. And that this whole thing is a massive mystery. And to pretend that it's not is to we're, – we're, we're going to hamstring all of these conversations. Mm -hmm. We're going to put shackles on all of our debate and all, all of our conversations where we're trying to figure out what's real and what's not real and what's the shared experience that we all have. Like I don't know how you view the world. And the only way for me to find out how you view the world is for me to ask you – and not berate you mm. for your opinions, but try, try to like get it out of you. Like, but what about this? Challenge you with other perspectives. Mm. How does he feel about that? Where, how did you, like sometimes you can get very quickly to how deep a person's perspective on an issue is with just a couple of questions. Mm. Because you see their, what they espouse, what they say, and, and a lot of times that aligns with very particular ideologies, whether it's right wing or left wing. Yeah. And then you, a couple of questions deep, 
you know, you start asking about opposing viewpoints and why do people think this way? And do you think that it, perhaps it's this? Do you think it's perhaps? And then you can get to how much they have actually yeah. thought about it. Actually, really commendable that Joe Rogan says like atheists, super, super like believing atheists. He says it's just as much of religion and dangerous compared to uh, religious fanatics as well, which is fair for him to say that. I mean, I that's commendable. So he's not like saying, oh, I don't believe in God. And this also reminds me of like, he says he grew up religious and they were mean. So he didn't like religion anymore. And he thought it was just a bunch of mean people. And that's sad. It's sad that he had those experiences. And that a lot of times for people who don't believe in God, it's because they've had bad experiences with people who claim to be Christian who probably weren't a great example of Jesus. Jesus was perfect. He didn't sin. People sin. We fall short. So you can't put your trust and hope in people. You can't put it in pastors. You can't put it in, in doctors or evangelists or apologetics. They're going to fall short, but Jesus never does. And that's what I hope Joe Rogan comes to understand and know. Let's continue to watch. The moment people become dogmatic, the moment people become ideologically captured by a very specific group of things that you've adopted as your opinions mm. because it aligns with science. We saw that during the pandemic, this yeah. trust the science idea. Well, which science? Like, what is science? Science is not a consensus. It's a bunch of different people looking at data and trying to come to a, And when you know that that's hamstrung and you know that that's captured, that's not science anymore. You know there's propaganda involved. You know there's lies. This is not science. This is a business, and it utilizes science, and you're caught up in an ideological debate about a thing that you should be completely objective about, but you're not because it's just like all the other things that human beings do. We mm -hmm. like to decide that we are correct and that we defend from that position. Yeah. Instead of just looking at... These ideas, like, I think one of the things that happened with atheism is that it did become like a philosophy. Remember when they had Atheism Plus? Do you remember that? <laughs> no, no. Do you remember that? <laughs> no. Oh, it was I'm wonderful. Stoned. So they had atheism, and then they had these, like, social justice warriors that came out with Atheism Plus. Oh, and it was those. atheism attached to a whole bunch of ideas mm. about, like, v b ways to behave, things that they value. Yeah. It's like a humanist Bible as well, isn't it? Exactly. They, they were basically forming a new religion. It was adorable. It was adorable to see that these patterns of thinking it just seemed to be inherent to human beings. Yeah. Like the tribal cultural rituals, tribal cultural philosophies, mm. their, 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 their myth of the origins of things that they all accept as their own. It's like an identifying factor that cohesively connects groups, which is why, like you said that you didn't enjoy uh, church because you don't like going to that. I actually like it. It's yeah, I've been to church. <laughs> you I just was, told me I that the Bible is one of the most boring. Joe Rogan likes going to church. Let's Let's go. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that he said that. Wow. Um, well, good for him. I hope he continues to go and continues to hear about the love of Jesus, that Jesus died on the cross for his sins so that he can be saved. And it's true. Atheism is a form of religion. That's something you decide to believe in or not to believe in. The reason why I say, okay, I'm so firm in my faith in why I believe in what I believe because of the experience that I had with Jesus Christ. The experience that he transformed me into a new creation. He, he saved me from my sins. I felt this love that I've never ever felt in my entire life. I've experienced him as a heavenly father that is always there for me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. When I've experienced that, 100% I'm going to stand firm in this and, and tell you like this can change your life. This will make you into a new creation. He will set you free. He will make you and he will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. That's why I stand firm in it. I'm sorry like maybe I am not the most open-minded person. I try to be, I try to listen to other people's opinions, but I know what God has done in my life. Bring stories. It's not boring. I didn't say it was boring. Oh, he's one of the worst stories? No, no, no. I said people are foolish and that story sucks. Oh, the story sucks. That's the story, just... so, like, the story of, I used to do a joke about uh, Noah and the ark that if you told that, I can't even do the same joke anymore, but if you ta told it to a you five years- Why can't you do the same joke? Because I used to say, oh, okay. if you, you told it to a, uh, I think I said uh, a, f a five-year-old kid you know, obviously with mental problems, hmm. he's going to find holes in that story. 
Yeah. He's going to go, wait a minute, just two of each animals, animals eat other animals. And, you know, the punchline was, I'm not that rude. But this idea that we have about these stories, mm. I think, is that they happen exactly as written. And I, I think it's way more likely that all these stories are about real events that took place a long time ago and were told in an oral tradition. It's just what, what, what really happened is very difficult to say. And when you have the hand of man, when you have human beings, especially in the New Testament, you know, I mean, you, you literally have people deciding what is going to be and not going to be in it. So mm. there's human beings deciding what is going to be in the Bible, which is insane. That's insane as it is. It doesn't mean that the things that are in there aren't representatives of the most recent version of yeah. telling a tale that probably did happen. Well, th this is this is what's dangerous. Yeah, it's because they had to decide which ones were actually reliable and actually pointed to the facts that actually happened. But the point where he said that these things maybe did happen, but maybe they're fabricated, I feel like that's what he's trying to say. There's been a lot of studies and a lot of things that have been coming out proving that these stories could have actually l literally happened. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, fire raining down from heaven, rocks and creating the sulfur and being able to fly down and they found literal bodies that um, were burnt in a certain way from that time period. Moses crossing the Red Sea, scientific evidence that could easily cause the Red Sea to split. If God created everything, why can't he cause those things to happen? I now have a Bible verse that will tie all of this together. Mark 10, 27 says, Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. If God wanted them to happen, they could have happened. If he can save Joe Rogan, he can save this philosopher, um, he can set them free, he can set you guys free. Um, he did it to me, I know he can do it to you. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I love and appreciate you all so much. I'm so blessed to have you in my life, um, being a part of this journey of mine, making videos. Guys, we hit 8,000 subscribers over the weekend again. Not again, we hit 7,000 last weekend, but we hit 8,000 over the weekend, so praise God. I'm so thankful for all of you for loving and supporting me. It means the world to me. And I know we can hit 10,000 by the end of the year. So guys, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Comment down below any of your thoughts, whatever that may be. I would love to hear them. And also, you might like this video here. See ya.